If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Now go download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And now back to Girl Down Podcast with me, Aeon. (laughs) You're listening to a new episode of Girl Down Podcast with your host, me, Aeon. So sit back, relax, and listen as I unpack the uncertainty of my 30s one episode at a time. listening to Girl Down Podcast with Aeon and today I want to have another conversation about Sydney Star. Now I know I'm late to the party but a couple of weeks ago from the date that I'm recording this, a couple of weeks back, there was this big story about Sydney, Sydney Star allegedly or possibly dating I can't remember his real name but he played Black, the black guy that played Eddie Winslow on the Family Matters. You know, in the black community, once you once you play a identifiable character, and that's kind of really the only big thing you have done, you will always be known as that character's name. And for all pu- intents purposes of this conversation, he will be Eddie Winslow. Now, pitch, pictures were released that show Sydney Starr and Eddie Winslow at a photo shoot together and they were taking they were taking pictures where they were they were up on each other like they were an item. And no shade, he's an attractive guy. He still looks good. Sydney's a very attractive woman. And you know, of course, to us in the trans community, it's like, okay, like, she's with another celebrity, but, you know, it is what it is. But to the cis hat community, as soon as these pictures came out, it was a big scandal on the shade room and all and all of the, the, chick, the Chitlin Circuit uh, Instagram blog sites and, you know, the, the typical headlines, is he gay, she's really a man, the yada yada boom. So when the pictures came out and it became the story, I believe I noticed that he kind of downplayed the story. Oh, we're not together. We're just friends. I'm actually engaged to another cis woman. And then Sydney went on a a, a, a promo trail. I remember she did a, a appearance on the re, the rail saying oh he's just a friend and we're not in a relationship together and this that and a third why i believe they both have the right to downplay their their situation and this is why i love this show because we just want to keep it straight sweet to the point the people are stupid clearly they haven't confirmed it but like no, we we are not stupid. Clearly, unless y'all were doing a movie or something, um, clearly, n- clearly something was going on, right? I don't know if they were in a relationship. I don't know. But two people don't take pictures like that. Like, like there's no logical explanation for the pictures to be happening, for the footage that came out. But again, the, the point of this, this of me picking this topic or picking this I I believe it's a larger conversation to unpack I remember a couple of months before this all came out Sydney was doing her rounds because of course she was on the the Zeus reality show Baddies ATL and 
I remember her talking about she was dating somebody and it it's a it's, it's somebody in the industry and um when when they whenever he decided to make, to become public about their relationship it was going to kick the doors open and it's just going to change the game but he just has to wait for the right time and, and yada yada bang and and me just putting two and two together i think and this is just me speculating. I can't say that whether this is true or not. I think Eddie Winslow was the guy that she was dating. And maybe the, the pictures or the promo they were doing, they were going to set it up for them to publicly um, announce their relationship. I think my position on that is this. And those of y'all don't know... Sydney, she's a cute girl. I don't have a problem with Sydney. I think Sydney is representation for her lane and the the type of girls that get life off of her. Like the the type of girl the type of girls in the community that they just aspire to be um real and to be those type of girls. Which you know, it's nothing wrong with that. But um, Sydney, in my opinion, definitely has a lane. I just hate that with somebody that has the the kind of reputation that Sydney has. We of course we know her stuff with the Cheney thing. S Sydney has the reputation that no matter like what she does, she's always going to have that air of like the girl that out at the celebrity or the girl you have to be careful around. And she's worked really hard in the past couple of years to, to kind of like change her image or to change how people see her. But it's hard when people are introduced to you a certain way. I guess my message to to the girls is, particularly the girls who are like so invested in cis and I'm speaking from I'm speaking from the place of I used to be one of those girls. I am recently one of those girls where. Cause to me, the to me the story is not in the sensational the sensationalism of the relationship between Sydney Star, the trans woman, and this um, used to be famous identical black cis hat man. To me, the story is in black trans women who put all of their eggs into fitting this image where you can. It's not necessarily about getting this the cis hat men to love you more than it is getting this black this identifiable identifiable black cis hat men to come out and to be public with you and to be shown be shown like it doesn't even necessarily have to be love but the fact that he's willing to to risk his own straight assuming privilege to be out with you it kind of solidifies your your womanhood or your femininity or your status as a woman and my perspective is like you can't put all of your eggs in that basket because as you see the moment that these cis het men that they're if they're not secure with their trans amorousness and their identity as a trans het man if they can't stand on their own independent of a relationship with the the passable black the passable trans woman where even if they call her a man well she's still pretty she's still looking if they can't stand on their own in that the minute that the rumors or the rumblings come or you become the topic on the breakfast club or the topic on the shade room, bitch, they're going to leave your ass high and dry. They're going to leave your, your ass high and dry because everybody is not able to withstand the scrutiny. Everybody, these, all of these, and I'm pretty sure you can go to the... I'm pretty sure that the trans supporter brother, the trans amorous brothers will say the same thing. Like being in the spotlight, being open, open your, opening yourself to scrutiny um, on that level. Um, everybody's not going to be able to do that. That doesn't mean that it's right. They should be able to withstand that. But when you try to position yourself that 
you being in a relationship, you being seen with this person that is going to open all of these doors for you or 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 is going to legitimize you and you're putting all of your trust and your eggs into this man who I I'm not I don't know if he's ever um messed with a trans woman before, but we don't know if he's been public with one. This would I'm assuming this would certainly be the public one. I think it's a risky game you play. I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a risky game you play and I think my role is to kind of to always unpack the the narrative that's missing from a lot of these platforms and and again this is all speculation but just judging the the interviews that I saw from Sydney before um, this story came out and just seeing the trajectory of what Sydney's trying to do. Like Sydney, even though Sydney really doesn't have any analysis, um, she's trying to legitimize she's trying to legitimize herself in like that black cishet space and a relate a relationship where she's with this side by side with this man, I guess in her mind would kind of do that. But I want to let my sisters like know, like no shade. You, I don't think you should be putting all of your your hope. Well, not your hopes and your dreams. I don't think you should be betting on you being next to um, this man. Um, legitim legitimize your grind to legitimize your um, womanhood because at any point the man could decide that he doesn't want the pressure that comes with. Um, being the th with having the trans girlfriend, and as we see from the Eddie Winslow thing, he's gonna have a cis woman in his pocket to, to say, "Oh, that's not real," and this is my real woman over here, and we're we're engaged and we're married, and then you're looking like a fool. You have to clean it up. Oh, it wasn't that serious, but it kind of was. It it it, it kind of was, and I just hate that. I've heard I've heard this type of conversation from other trans women where they get mainly with these high profile black um cishet men and it's just like, well, we're together but like we're waiting for the right time to go public because of like his career. And I just don't like that energy. Um because I don't ever want um trans women, especially black trans women, like I want us to experience abundant love, like abund abundant support. Like, but because because of who I am and what I bring to the table, even though you might get judged or people might have something to say, I'm worth being public for. Like, I'm worth being public. You don't need no PR or no media training to figure out how to navigate me because I'm a good woman and I bring a lot to the table and I'm a good person and I just I just hate that we feel like we have to placate into uh, fitting into their world and not jeopardizing the bullshit that they think they they have going on like nobody cares about y'all like no like really you should be trying to figure out if you're not going to disturb our lives. If you're going to add to our lives. And I, I don't know. I just. I want Sydney to win. And I want her to win on her own. I don't want it, I don't want her to have to align with cishet people. In order for her to be legitimized. For her to evolve. And not just for her. For all, for, for all of the community. For myself. Like I don't want to have to um, get by on cishet approval. On on desirability from a cis hat man because I'm so much more than that. I'm so much more than that. I have so much more um, to offer and I'm not holding myself back for nobody. I'm not lying for anybody. I'm not covering for, and that doesn't mean I'm going to out people, but when it's time to tell my story, I'm going to tell my truth to the best of my ability. And I don't care who's offended or who's hurt, who, who is hurt. This is my story. And I don't know. I, you, I, you can't validate me. You can't validate what's for me. So those are my two cents on the thing. Like I said, I love Sydney. Um, she's a lovely girl. But I did, to me, it it kind of did. I got the impression that she thought this was going to be the thing that 
validated her and solidified her. And this is like, no shade, girl. You didn't need that relationship. You're kind of already on your way to, with you're with the baddies ATL thing. I'm pretty sure that's going to spin off to something like you are a bad bitch. You're a bad bitch, and we like we all are bad bitches. But that's all I got. And thank y'all so much for listening and supporting me. I will see y'all next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Girl Down Podcast with me, Aeon. If you like the show, please be sure to go on over to Apple Podcasts and rate and review this podcast. Also, make sure that you're engaging with me on social media. Also, if you have any inquiries or you want to send me any questions, be sure to email me at girldownpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, bye, (laughs) y'all.